Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope you are enjoying, of course, weather that I think is wonderful. It's warm, it makes me happy, sun is shining, we got a little rain. And I can't believe we're into the second week of July already, which means my best pal, Ryan Fletter, is usually until, I guess it was called COVID, would be in Italy this week. But Barolo Grill did not go as a group as yet. So I get Ryan's letter here. Good morning, my love. Hi. And you know, with, typically I'd be returning from Italy like yesterday. So, and I did get to Italy a couple of times to sneak away slightly. So I'm, you know, it's still, on, I'm still on my uh, cadence a little bit. <laughs> well, trying. I want to know about it, but all on my bucket list, and it's getting to the point, you better fill it pretty soon, is I get to go on that trip to Italy with you all. You know, we're such a motley crew that I don't know if you'd handle, you know, 24 hours of us before you'd say, oh my God, what is this bunch of monkeys? <laughs> no, I, I, I can handle them all. But, uh, they would say, what are they doing with her? Okay. Tell us what's Yeah, happening. I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, I, we, I announced the staff next year. Really? This, could be the, this is when we're going to do this again next year, which is what we historically did since 1995. You know, 4th of July week, we'd close and go to Italy. And, and because of COVID conditions and travel, it's a bananas. But this next coming year, which is less than 365 days, you know, I said countdown has begun for us to plan and it's a, a magnanimous thing to plan anyhow when you have a dozen plus people to go to italy and under the craziness of now not knowing what the craziness of later will be but um so that's kind of coming up and in the meantime uh daryl and i the chef of barolo you know zipped away to italy back uh in may a little bit um right at the end of may so it was just a perfect time before the the storm of people and the weather and ran off to Italy for a week and ate in every single Michelin restaurant we could just to kind of like get a week of culinary, you know, exuberance. And um, I actually slipped away for Italy with my wife and kids just to do a little bit of non that to break the ice. So I, you know, I kind of danced around Italy a bit. You could see life is coming back to normal, as normal as anything can be. And, and they're rust, they're, ro they're robust and busy and, and, um, so I was really excited to go a couple of times and, and then, you know, Daryl, chef and I got to eat some really nice, high quality other connect, connect with other chefs too. have been doing the same thing. who have been packing to go lunches for two years. So it was pretty, pretty awesome. And on our Instagram feed, I posted all those pictures and places that we just hit. Yeah. Okay. What, what did you find there that is different or so? new that you want to bring back you know sometimes things like actually we we just put a, a, a dish on the menu this week um which is a seafood dish and it's with the flavors of puttanesca now we that's a classic dish but and we've been doing it at barolo since you know the beginning off and on various different renditions pastas and you know some different components and deconstructed reconstructed and so sometimes it's nice to just do like a riff and that's what daryl we just did this week on flavors of puttanesca because it's tomatoes and olives and capers and things that sometimes this time of the year are very um comfortable and fun and it's a beautiful dish so sometimes it's a new thing but with older classic elements um we just put a new salad on our menu or our set, one of our classic salads because it's so in high demand, our arugula salad with this truffle aioli. And we always do a tomato burrata, like kind of a riff on tomato mozzarella um, this time of the year. So we just put that back on with heirloom tomatoes and burrata cheese and little balsamic pearls. So things that are like, you know, not so pedestrian, just like balsamic and basil, but a little elevated. And, you know, sometimes, especially in the current conditions, it's, uh, it feels like a, a return to home in a lot of ways right now in the world, um, return to normal, return to kind of where we left off. So 
um, it also feels to be in theme with what's going on, which is let's just bring some really great foods and forward. And so going to Italy is a really great inspiration for us to do that. You know, we actually saw a dish that had done some flavors of puttanesca and that's a, there's another very famous restaurant on the coast and they do the same thing kind of their own riff back and forth. And I think that kind of inspired Daryl to lay, hey, I like that idea too. Let's, let's do that this time of the year. So so a lot of the menu items, you know, are um, comfy, homey, but also contemporary, flavorful, current ingredients of things that are, you know, fresh melon and prosciutto is back on the menu. But, you know, we're slicing the melon really thin like the prosciutto, so it kind of mimics each other. Um, you know, that's not reinventing the wheel. It's just kind of a new 2022 artist impression maybe of it, but um, that's that's what I really uh, love about what Daryl does and what he's doing right now at the menu. Well, he always does things with the seasonal and wonderful. Yeah. And I've tasted some of these along the way, but it's fun because you take risotto and make it summer. Or yeah, like we we're doing risotto with roasted um, uh, red pepper, but it's a sweet pepper. And then it has like a little anchovy crema around it and some capers that are lightly fried really tasty, not super rich. And, you know, no. maybe six, eight, eight weeks before we change it up again and decide what the flavors will be. But that's, that's, I don't think I've had that one. But I'm and that sure. one we just did. Um, and, you know, we, we went to Rome, you know, several years ago and went to a restaurant that did done some similar thing and kind of went, ah, you know, again, our trips to Italy are really about inspiring, not plagiarizing, but, you know, well, capturing. Yeah. Right. Concept. And then we just fire them off when it makes it, uh, you know, kind of appropriate. Um, so a lot of the menu items, you know, sometimes you sort of have to go, well, you know, there's one component on that that came from our gallivanting around five years ago. So well, good for you. Good for them. But I mean, it's fun. You have for people who might not know, which I can't imagine, the same basics because there's something for everyone in every category. It's sort of that item. Well, there's always a duck or a fish or a pork or something like that, but you do change them. Yeah. And, you know, so there, like you said, there's a poultry dish, which is our duck and, you know, red meat and a white meat. So beef tenderloin or pork tenderloin. And, you know, we're doing a seafood that was halibut now as sea bream. And, you know, like Daryl has to, you know, of course, you know, lamb loin is fantastic right now. We just put that on the menu. Um, also more affordable than lamb chops, which are just astronomical. So this time of the year and what's going on in everyone's brain is just yeah, everything we can do to try to also, you know, bring in some modest uh, pricing, which is very challenging to do right now. There's uh, a subject in itself to talk about. Yeah, yeah. That's another, uh, you know, rail, you know, railway on its, on its you know, loose caboose kind of thing with how, how, how to project all of our costing and pricing and food pricing and transportation and labor. And it's just going to keep being silly a bit for this summer, I imagine. But um, so we're mindful of that, trying to, trying to think about what things are, are uh, appropriate. And so lamb loin is fantastic. It's done with uh, a charred roasted green pepper sauce, which we went to a restaurant and, and that was a component that we had um, in a seafood restaurant actually. And we just both tasted it and said, that's delicious. I never really think about green roasted peppers in Italy on a sauce that's kind of, you know, sometimes you think of Mexican food, Spanish food, but um, we thought, well, okay. And, and here he is doing it with a lamb loin and um, summer squash, a little bit of goat cheese, things that are kind of, you know. Sounds marvelous. Yeah, so that's beautiful. And we just put that on the menu. So, you know, we're kind of trickling little things in, but I always find it's really fun to one component or two might've been from our, our current gallivanting or, or from last year's or the year before. Right. Um, well, but one of the big things I found is people, including me, walk into a restaurant and I know what it is because I go to the grocery store and it's appalling, but you look at the prices and I think people are beginning, just beginning to realize that it's got to cost more because you're, it's costing, you're not making more money on these raised prices. 
Right. You know, margins are already really a, a challenge for restaurants. You know, you're squeaking out a couple percentages when you can. And, and whether it's a robust December or a quiet summer, you got to average it all together. And, and uh, when when eggs become 300 times more expensive, you know, that's a 300 percent increase or something or beef is. You know, you sort of naturally go, well, then the menu has to increase 300% if everything else is 300%. Why is not the menu 300 You know, that that's a mathematical um, calculation that is challenging for any of us. So, um, you know, right now we're, we're really lucky and doing pretty well by also not, um, we stick to our same, you know, great purveyors and, and, you know, things are costing everybody more. So we just yeah, each day right. watch the bouncing ball. <laughs> um, but I think we're doing a really great uh, uh, value. You know, we've been putting these tasting menus together at the restaurant where you can get four courses. It's $89, but it is a protein like lamb or beef or how, I mean, these are all the components that go into your, to your dinner. And so it's four courses and that's a nice way to compartmentalize a meal or you just poach a la carte, you know, an appetizer, a salad or a, an entree and, and, you know, with everyone's, you know, it's, it's going to be 98 degrees today or tomorrow. And, and these next, and tomorrow. these days and weeks ahead are, you know, maybe a little bit lighter fare, lighter eating. So we keep that in mind and, you know, have a glass of Prosecco and a salad and a piece of sea bream is, is probably on the radar for the next 30 days or a nice elegant piece of lamb loin and, you know, things that aren't super rich and heavy. And, and while we're all getting through the, you know, hundred degree heat, um, but also treating ourselves well with high quality products like Colorado lamb and, you know, great chefs like Daryl Truitt and yes. restaurants like Barolo Grill. So And Barolo does something very well. If you want to have a drink and a salad and a half order of pasta or however you want to do it, Barolo is very accommodating. Yeah, you bet. And, you know, you have to have a $90 dinner. No, not at all. Have a drink and three appetizers, which is my way of saying, oh my gosh, that's wonderful. You know, and I always have loved the mixture of diners at Barolo, some doing a four course menu, some are celebrating, you know, every night there's a birthday, a wedding or an anniversary or somebody's really celebrating and and they want to let their hands up in the air and roller coaster through the evening with wine pairings and then you know there's many of us who just go you know I just want a snack I, I don't even know how hungry I am until I've eaten the first thing or well, that, two and, and then, thirsty. Then I'll have three because they're really good yeah so you know that's that's I feel the mantra right now is have a drink and then maybe you'll have another but or have a, a course of food um, or two and be very content. So um, that's, that's the style of July and into August we go and we'll see, but yeah, it's already, you know, feels like we're um, well into summer, I guess. And it's really kind of just begun. So it actually, it's half over and it's just begun. Yeah. Right. I don't know where the time goes. I don't know where it starts and stops anymore. Um. <laughs> where at Barolo, you could just never be unhappy because of your drink looks and the service and everything about it. And, you know, we have this fun patio outside right now um, with the weather being what it is, we have covered bungalows. So people can be, uh, if like last night, it decided to rain at, you know, six 30 yes. or a half hour. Um, luckily we have all these bungalows, which allow for people to be in and out of, of the, the weather that's, you know, so famously and consistent here in July with Colorado. Um, but what a lovely time to be out before we all, before you know it, we're cooped back up inside with weather. And so um, I think everyone's pretty uh, interested in, right? So we have a flocking uh, number of folks going to the outside um, environments right now that we have, which are shaded fully from the sun right at 530. And then you're just dealing with kind of whether we're going to have rain or not, or if it's 98 degrees. So but, you know, it's typically 70, 75 at 730 or eight o'clock at night. And, and we've got these bungalows, which are temperature controlled. So a lot of folks 
as really, I, uh, excuse me, as I recall, aren't they air conditioned if you want to They're air conditioned and it heated. Tells, so, tells you know, <laughs> so you can really just jump and we prime them so that we already know, hey, it's hot out, turn on the air conditioners. Hey, it's colder out, turn on some heaters. Um, which is will not be the case for the next 30, 60 days. But then we start to get in that diurnal cold in the morning, warm in the afternoon stuff. And um, so we have a really lovely outside that's been fun while we're all enjoying sunshine and being outdoors and out of our offices and this uh, tremendous Colorado weather that we get and helps, you know, pull the doom and gloom out of us and make us feel inspired amongst, amongst all this, you know, craziness. Um, so beautiful sunshine and beautiful weekend this weekend, and then we'll deal with next weekend. <laughs> I, listen, I love summer and I believe you make everybody so welcome, no matter what. And personally, I just want to say thank you to you because for me, I have two huge charity events coming up. And Barolo, of course, was first there when we do our Morgan Addicts Concourse, August 27th. And then the Food Bank of the Rockies is doing a four chef dinner, which actually Daryl was my first choice head and got it all together with me. And that's September 15th. And that's an all outdoor thing. And you're first to say, yes, we're there. And I can't thank you enough. You're, you know, we're trying to participate in the out external events um, in the restaurant in the last two years has been so challenging. Right. We just jump on every single grenade to leave and go do events as kind of another great return to the whole process. And that is still a challenge because you're not sure if when you, you know, right. staff, uh, is your staff or is the supply chain issues, this whole complete domino effect going to strike on you that day, which it seems to, but then you need a, a plan B or C to kind of cover the bases. And so um, we're trying to kind of return to all that. And so we'll do the, the Denver food and wine as well in September, which is a return. And then, you know, gosh, we're just also thrilled that um, everyone loves our marvelous food and everybody's coming in and enjoying it. And I hope everybody stays safe and healthy and, and the world kind of continues to return to abundance. Um, but, and, and um, you know, we all just kind of hold our breath here this summer and, and see what happens. But uh, I, I think we all feel like we're, we've got our running shoes on for whatever it is. So we'll be at those, have a great time. We'll be at those lovely events. But if Rolo, I mean, people just go on in, Take a seat. You won't be disappointed and have as much four course meal or as little and you'll just have a wonderful time. Staff makes it very, very pleasant. But tell people, Barolo Grill, when are you open? What are you doing? How did they get to you? You know, uh, Barolo is open Tuesday through Saturday night. So we're closed Sunday and Monday. And you can just drive right down Sixth Avenue, right at the front door of St. Paul, 3030 East uh, Sixth Avenue. We're on that, what I call Sixth Avenue corridor. So it's easy to park. You can park your giant semi of whatever vehicle because it's pretty much uh, easy to just land your vehicle anywhere on the premises, walk in the door. Um, dinner service between five o'clock and, and 10 o'clock those Tuesday through Saturdays. And you can go to our website, which is barolagirldenver.com and you can book a reservation instantly or buy a gift card or look at the pictures and see what it looks like or see what the outside looks like versus the inside, see what the bar area looks like. There's lots of environments. You can just kind of wander, um, send a free, you know, send a message and let us know you're coming. It would be great. You can call while you're in the car driving down sixth Avenue and we can throw a blanket or a napkin on top of its, of a chair for you. Um, so that we're holding it. Even that impulsive works really well. Um, our phone number is 303-393-1040. You can call and that phone number, just say, Hey, we're coming in. Can we sit at the bar? Or do you have a table outside inside? No, Cause my seat's there. <laughs> you might have just finished though so time for the next person oh, okay <laughs> well it is wonderful so are you i want everybody to like and subscribe to the gab on youtube so you can hear this there 
You'll find it on Facebook and Instagram as well. Have we forgotten anything other than a fabulous new menu, a perfect place for summer dining in or out? And what more do I not tell them except go? Come on down and, uh, you know, enjoy, you know, a little Italian experience away from whatever, you know, things you're, you're, your, your busy and your work life and your family life. And it's a, a beautiful summer. So we're really excited to, to see you in whatever capacity it is. In a beautiful surrounding. How many years now? So we are arriving at our 30th year in December. We have been 29 years marching. Oh my God. I and can't. I've been there 27 and a half of them. So I've been there all of them. <laughs> uh, they didn't let me in for the first 18 months. And then uh, you were five. They, couldn't get, they couldn't get rid of me after that. You were five years old. What were they going to do? You know, uh, I, 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 I was, I, I will say I did alter my birth certificate to get into the, my very first restaurant job. Yes, that is actually true. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't aged anyway, but we love you, but they are maybe 30 years, but very young, modern, sophisticated, and it's unique Italian. It's not yeah. your typical, and it's a place you really want to go. I think I'm on my way. I have to call and make a reservation. <laughs> we uh, love our, we exude love and a huge wine list. And we have whatever it is. We just have tons of fun with whatever you're looking to do. And they Wendy. make Thank you. Much okay. love. Ciao. Much love. Bon weekend. And you too. Much love. Thank Arrivederci. you. Arrivederci.